Good morning one and all. Here's a couple of videos, video one or two, in which I'm going to look at what I consider maybe two of the most important things that anyone should be doing daily, really, just to explore their body, to open up uh, tissues, to find length and to find shortening and find loading and contracting, to allow us to hopefully move and breathe and then eventually live a slightly better, happier, less discomfortable, discomfortable, is that a word? Uncomfortable life. Uh, so the two things that we're going to look at are how our body moves in what is called the sagittal plane, which is essentially the side view. So this is a classic position, kind of that we all get stuck in, typing, texting, driving. And given time, this can become uh, a stuck position. Now, one of my teachers I'm very lucky to have worked with, Gary Ward, this is basically taken from his work um, along with another one of my teachers and also one of Gary's fellow kind of teachers, Helen Hall. This, these works come from these people and I use them daily with uh, the clients I see and really um, as a foundation of movement, these are two of the best things that you could really do. So the first one we're going to look at is what's called either uh, the cogs and they can be done on the floor or the wall. Um, but we're going to break it down so it's uh, more of a developmental movement first. And in the kind of MNRI world slash kind of developmental patternings, it's sometimes referred to as the meerkat from what I understand. So we're going to look at that first and try to find a nice, simple, easy, gentle way to move. And then we'll bring that into the more of the four cogs and we'll do it on the floor and then on the wall. And then the second video we'll be looking at how we can begin to find a reflexive movement for side bending our body properly or more efficiently and better. Because a lot of people, they end up with one shoulder which is lower than the other. And then quite often they end up with one hip which is higher than the other. And you can see how it makes, when this is down and this is up, it bends me in this direction. So what if we could begin to make the body feel like it actually wants to bend in this direction more reflexively? So that's what we're going to look at. But anyway, the first video is this. So we're going to start lying on our backs with our legs long and our bodies down on the floor. So we're going to start with the legs long. If you need to, to begin with, you could. The legs do come into this at some point, but if you have trouble with your back, Maybe uh, just bend your knees up, knock them together, put a bolster under your knees. Head on the floor, and you're going to be looking up. Now, the idea of this is to try to feel as if the head is going to try to slide along the floor. And I'm going to come closer and pull the camera down a little bit so you can see, because this is kind of important stuff. So, we're going to be here, and what we're looking for is, as you can see, I can put my head in this direction and what it does to my ribs, it pushes my ribs down. But if I go the other way, it pulls my ribs up. And then again, if I go back down, so this is the, the basis of the cogs as Gary uh, teaches them. And if you watch my pelvis, as my head slides in this direction, it pulls almost my chin to my chest, my chest to my chin, but then it tilts my pelvis away and you create this small gap under your back. So this is the foundation of the cogs. So this is what we're looking for, is this movement here. Sliding head, tilting chest, tilting pelvis. So if we think of it as, in Gary's words, cogs, when one cog moves in one direction, it pushes the other in the other direction. So as my head slides into what technically we would call maybe an anterior tilt, then the, pe then the rib cage is tilting in this direction. So the front is lifting up, the back is dropping down into a posterior tilt, and then the pelvis is pulling itself, or being pulled through the spine into an anterior tilt. So this is the front tilting down, this is the back tilting down, this is the front tilting down. So they've moved, these two match, this is different, and then we can relax. So you can begin to just feel how, when you pull your head along the floor, Maybe it's pulled your rib cage up and then you relax and go back to normal and you suddenly realize how far you've moved. And so you can just begin to extend this and you can stretch it out and relax it. Now in the more uh, developmental, so what I would suggest where we all begin is rather than trying to put all of this together at once, break it down so that we start 
one at a time. And again, I'm going to straighten my legs for now, but you don't have to. And you're just going to imagine you've woken up. Or think of a cat or a dog when they first wake up. They take that big morning yawning. Kind of, it's not a hassle, it's not a stress, it's not um, a challenge, you're not really pushing yourself, you're just stretching. And that's actually called pandiculation. So what we're going to try to do is find a pandiculation here. So imagine you've just woken up and you're just going to gently slide that head on the floor until it hits, hits the stop point. And the eyes are just staying up, imagining if that was the horizon, that's where they stop, and then they relax again. And then again, you just stretch, and then relax again. So that's the start. And what we're then going to try to do is find the hand. So we're going to find the fingers facing up. Um, one of my clients said this is like the Tony Stark or Iron Man, because it's almost like you're shooting through your hands. So that's what we're going to try and feel. So the head stays still now. And all we're going to try to do is gently slide the fingertips up, slide the ball of the hand away. And you should feel that it almost lifts your rib cage up. And then you relax and notice how it drops again. So then you can begin to feel how this pushing of the arms away is doing the same thing of sliding the head away. So then perhaps we can combine the two, let's see. So then we begin to slide the head along the floor and we push the hands away. And you'll hopefully feel as you push these hands away, like this shoulder is almost moving down in the back and into the almost bringing your shoulder blades down into the spine, which is helping to extend that rib cage. And so then you can begin to just gently again, pandiculate those hands away, that neck away, that morning yawning stretching. Now the third and final bit, which is probably the most challenging as far as this meerkat, is trying to feel and see if we can do similar things and stretch those feet away to create a bit of a gap on your back. This is still a bit of a struggle for me. I'm still working on it, but it's getting better. So again, let's just think about stretching and lengthening. And you'll notice how it pulls length into your abdomen, lifts the rib cage, and it begins to drag your head along the floor. So now we're back in the same space. You could perhaps try and do all three, and then relax again. And then again, we can try for all three together. So the head, and the feet are pulling away, the hands are pushing, sliding down and away. And we've got this uh, opposition thing happening. We're finding this full length in the body. So this is the how we can stretch into it. And then, as I said, we can take this into uh, the cogs a bit more once we've begun to free this up. And if you feel for your bum cheeks, you'll feel a bony bit, which is called your six bones or your ischial tuberosities, if you want to get super jazzy. And all we're going to try to do is we're going to start the pelvis and we're going to try and tilt this pelvis forward. Tilt it, tilt And imagine that those sit bones, those bony prominences, are going to go down into the floor. So we're not trying to just jar our ribs up. We're actually trying to find length. We're trying to find ourselves pull long and feel these sit bones sink down. And you'll notice how it drags you along the floor. And then, of course, you could put those arms in as so and see how that goes. The other way to do the arms would be just to gently turn the palms to face up and then keep turning them out as you tilt that tailbone, as you slide the head. And then you relax it back. And then so you can see now all of this is turning, cranking, lifting. Cranking is a horrible word. I shouldn't say that. Just it's lengthening this whole front body and then the whole back body. And you can then begin to go all the way. So this is where the cogs begin to happen. So you can begin to go both directions. All the way in and all the way out. And so doing it on the floor of the wall means that we keep on axis. Our head, our hips and our hearts stay stacked and in line. And so that's the basis of the cogs. Now we can then take that up and we'll just rearrange the video, um, the camera, so it's slightly better. And hopefully we can see from here, if I come and stand against the wall, no it's not. So we'll come and stand against that wall there. Now if I then put my back and bum and head against the wall, feet just slightly away, 
we can do exactly the same thing. So from here, we can grow our head tall, feel the rib cage lift, turn those arms out, feeling that pelvis drop forward, and then relax that down again. Then grow tall again, and then relax back down with the internal rotation of the arms. Again, you're trying to keep your bum, your back, and your head stacked on top of each other so they all stay in touch in the wall. And then you can roll in and out. And that's the start. That's the good place to start for this sagging plane. You'll feel like you're suddenly taller. You'll suddenly feel like your neck is moved back and your head is moving back on top of your shoulders. You'll feel length across your chest. So I hope that makes sense and you can give that a go. Uh, there's going to be a second video for this reset, which will be the side bend. So let me know how you get on with these two videos.